offered and made to help us as we make our deliberations and decisions around the zoning status of casinos in Toronto. So with that, um, moving to the first listed deputant, I have Peter Tavins, who is the member of Provincial Parliament for Toronto Danforth. Peter, if you can just come here. You will have five minutes. You can watch your time on these clocks here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to members of the Community Council for this opportunity to speak this evening. The people of Toronto Danforth Riding overwhelmingly reject any proposal to locate a casino in the Portlands. A majority reject any new casino on Toronto's waterfront. Last month, I tabled a stack of letters and emails from my constituents at Queen's Park voicing their opposition to the McGuinty government's plans to locate a casino in the Portland. Over the summer, I went door to door in my riding talking to residents about this issue. They see a proposal that will increase addiction problems and crime in our city. My best estimate of their sentiment is that 70% of them reject the location of a casino in the Portland. On the doorstep, people with gambling addiction problems told me they did not want a casino nearby because it would be a huge source of temptation for them. Adults talked about their childhood experience with gambling addicted parents and the damage that it did to their lives. Others see a proposal that will take dollars from our local Main Street businesses. Recently, the Ontario Restaurant Association released their study showing that in areas like Toronto, a casino would reduce business for local restaurants and bars. They are, as others have said, a shell game. Healthy commercial strips are the key to making our neighborhoods livable. Undermining those commercial strips is a huge mistake. A.J. Diamond and others wrote an insightful op-ed piece for the Globe in July of this year. They referred to casinos as an extractive industry. Our local ec economy faces challenging times in the next few years. All of you know that. It doesn't need a vacuum cleaner stuck in our collective wallets to make it even more challenging. As a number of my constituents said on the doorstep, the House always wins. They're right. There is no gain in volunteering to be fleeced. It's unfortunate that the McGinty government has decided to go down this path. Fortunately, you don't have to follow them. Mr. Chair, there are good plans in place to develop the Portlands in a way that will boost our film industry and reinvigorate the waterfront. A new casino will damage those plans. I urge you to reject this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and your hand. Thank you very much. So, um, members of the public, just we, we have a, an odd rule here, which is uh, you're not supposed to try to influence the way we think by applauding or booing. Um, so a practice we have had, a practice we have had is if you like what you heard, you can use jazz hands. And if you don't like what you've heard, you can do this. That way we have nice, quiet, contemplative space here. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions for the deputy? Seeing none. Nick, thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, Peter, uh, Councillor Fletcher. Control your own life. Yeah. Unbridled power. <laughs> I like that. Um, as far as uh, is it your understanding that um, the Portlands is now going through a, an acceleration process and a precinct planning process after City Council agreed to that last week, and there was a large public um, conversation about what should happen? In fact. You're quite right, Councillor Fletcher. There have been ongoing consultations with the public. Uh, we've had meetings in our community. You've had the discussions here at City Council. You know what you want in the Portlands. You know what your goals are. This does not fit with everything that we've talked about, really, now for the last decade and a half, two decades. This is uh, an entirely different and, frankly, not sustainable direction. 
So if uh, after one year of study and acceleration, business planning, uh, and just five large public meetings, there would be a recommendation to put a casino in the Portlands. Would that? Would you think that would fit the city process and waterfront Toronto after what we've been through for the last year? Would that surprise well, you that that would happen? Uh, or does nothing? Some, some days, councillor in this business, nothing surprises me. But well, you have uh, a councillor, so you do know it's that. Yeah, the um, the fact that we've gone through an extensive planning process, that there's been wide public consultation, that in fact this council here wrestled with this issue over a year ago and it was clear that the public wanted a sustainable, low-rise, transit-dependent, media-friendly development of the port is a direction that seems to have been accepted by the city as a whole. Not just by you as a city council, but the citizens of this city. To go in this direction after having done all that consultation, after having built all of that public support strikes me as completely wrong-headed. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Layton, you have questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Tabbins, the, the provincial government has removed the requirement for a, uh, a, a, a referendum on a casino for municipalities to host referendums on a casino. Um, if the City of Toronto or any municipality in Ontario were to choose to, uh, to, to move on a casino, do you think it would be appropriate for the, the public to have a say through something like a referendum? Absolutely. And in fact, Andrea Horvath, leader of our party, is bringing that forward to the legislature next week. She had a media conference in Hamilton today talking about the need for Hamilton to have a referendum if this decision was going to be made in that city and for other cities to have equal powers. Uh, in your experience, speaking to Torontonians, uh, is, is that their wish as well? As I go door to door, they certainly think at a minimum they should be allowed to have their say in a referendum. As I said earlier, when I've talked to my constituents in my riding, it is very clear that they reject the idea of a casino out of hand. Thank you. Councillor Mahavik. Yes, thank you. Just following up on that, we did have a referendum, 1997, yes. and I think the vote was 72%. Um, I'm not sure if that's 72% uh, opposed. Uh, what would you think, as someone who practices in the area of democracy, um, the appropriate statute of limitations, I guess, would be on, uh, on a referendum? Would you consider that referendum binding still? Or do you think um, we have passed that and we have the authority unilaterally to go different as a council without perhaps having another referendum? Well, I believe, Councillor, that having a referendum in 1997 was a good idea uh, and that if there was any attempt to vary the decision that the public should again be consulted in the same way. My sense from going out there, and you can speak about your own wards and your own constituents, is that public opinion has not changed that much in Toronto since that time. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Tavins. Um, I've received a letter, as every councillor has, from OLG, um, talking, encouraging us to meet with them so that they can explain the benefits of their so-called um, modernization plan for gaming in the modernization for gaming in Ontario. Um, and they claim that the plan includes a proposal to build a new gaming facility in the GTA using private sector skills and resources. Our vision is to create an integrated gaming center that fits seamlessly into our vibrant cityscape. So do you think that a so-called integrated gaming center, which I think is, means a casino. That's uh, my best guess too. Um, will fit seamlessly into our vibrant cityscape anywhere in this city. Well, others will be able to speak more knowledgeably than me about the rest of the waterfront. I can say that in the port area, I don't see that it would fit in seamlessly. Uh, 
adequate. If we're going to redevelop the port, and we should, we must, then redeveloping it so that it is based on a sound transit plan, that it is able to move forward without having to take up a huge amount of road space is the only thing that makes sense. If you put in a huge car dependent suburban mall style casino in that area, you're asking for more congestion, frankly, and more urban problems. Exactly, that's where um, I was going to move in the next set of questions. There will be impacts, and you have been a city councillor as well, and you know that much of our time is spent on looking at parking and traffic and um, transit. And uh, I guess other than those impacts, which clearly there will be, do you have a sense of other impacts um, that we could expect if we see a, end up with a casino in our waterfront? Well, what, what I alluded to in my presentation uh, was that there are not an infinite number of dollars in this city uh, for restaurants, for bars, for entertainment. And if you spread those dollars further into an outfit, a proposal, um, that has a history of being fairly effective at extracting those from a community, you undermine our main streets. Uh, all of us who've represented communities know that making sure that those main streets are healthy is really critical. Parts of the Danforth that have empty storefronts have severe crime problems. Parts of the Danforth that are chock-a-block with restaurants, stores, bars, and have lively street life do very well. I think playing with that urban fabric, undermining the existing retail, restaurants, bars, services, is bad news for this city. Thank you very much. Councillor Fragadakis, you have questions? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Peter. Um, I was looking at this uh, staff report uh, and it outlines four potential scenarios in which a casino or gaming establishment may be considered for approval within the Toronto and East York District. And in scenario one, which is permitted as of right in the zoning bylaw, it says that the zoning bylaw would require revisions to permit this use and apply standards. Notwithstanding this, the province may issue a ministerial zoning order to allow for this use. And I just wanted to ask you, what do you think about that? Well, first of all, I don't think that it's prudent on the part of the province to overrule a city in its urban planning. Uh, we've already seen this province, this provincial government, this premier act in a very ham-fisted way in dealing with different sectors of our society. This council is one of the largest governments in Canada. It makes significant decisions about the viability of the city that the Canadian economy rests on. To overrule you on a substantive, substantive city planning issue is a huge mistake. I understand they may well have the power. If they use it, they're being foolish. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next I have Maureen Linnett.